Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another Helldivers 2 video. Today we are going to be talking about the big patch, the big update, Escalation of Freedom. This is going to be the full overview of the new update. Obviously I've already shared some of my first impressions. I also uploaded a video where I tried out the level 10 difficulty on the bug side and how difficult that was. Oh no. Oh my god! But today we're just going to discuss the patch, go over uh, all of the new features, all of the new bug fixes, the new additions to the game. So let's start with the big things. Obviously we have a new difficulty level as I've just said, I've tried it out, I've uploaded a video on it if you want to go check that out. We now have Super Hell Dive difficulty. I recently tried it on the bots as well. Jesus H Christ. What is with this game and just making it harder and harder and harder? It's fun if you want to try a different challenge, but honestly, I, I'm going to dip it back down. I'm going to dip it back down. I'm not making level 10 a regular thing. However, this new difficulty added bigger enemy outposts. We now have terminate strongholds and automaton fortresses. These can only be found in difficulty level 10. And these are cool. And you're actually able to see these on the mini map and on the objective map as you come in. To the mission there's a mutated egg you can pick up from the terminal stronghold as well not sure what that could be maybe it's hinting at a new enemy type coming down the line i don't know for the automaton fortresses you have to get a automaton cpu with valuable secret data you must extract with it and your counterintelligence support will be rewarded so basically pick up the confidential data get the hell out you've done that right that's another side objective that you can do in this new update. Also, I'm not sure if I missed this or if this is sort of part of the new update. I think it was part of a previous major order and it's kind of just stick around. But we also have the new mission type, Neutralize Orbital Defenses, which is destroy the Automaton's orbital cannons in the area. Fairly sure this came with a major order and I completely just missed this somehow. Let me know in the comments down below if I did genuinely just have a brain fart and completely miss this but it's cool to see a new mission type as well but as hard as difficulty level 10 is it's nice to see some new strongholds some new outposts and honestly i really dig them just adding another layer to the game of course which is never a bad thing as well as this we got two new secondary objectives on the terminate side we have to extract with a living lava sample that the bugs will do anything to get back. I ran into one of these side objectives doing a level nine difficulty mission. Luckily it showed up on the map before we actually dove into the mission. So I decided to not bring a backpack item so I could be the one to carry the lava, the little baby bug. It looks like it has a health bar as well, so if you die with it on, I think, it gradually loses health and could destroy and you fail that side objective. And obviously, if you leave it behind, you'll fail. You have to extract with this thing. And the other one is assaulting an automaton human processing plant. Yeah, that's right. They're processing humans. It's a flesh blender. What the hell? This is the most grim thing, I think, is, that has been added to the game in a long time. Now, you just have to destroy this bioprocessor is what they call it. It's pretty fun again new objectives new things to do in the game never a bad thing these work pretty well just adding more layers to the game never a bad thing we also have new enemy types the big one on the bug side is the impaler this was from helldivers 1 and it is scary it is very big and it has huge tentacles that can come out and whack you across the map no 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 Oh my god! Also on the bug side, we got the Spore Charger, which is like a bile variant of the Charger. However, it has a thick acidic fog that follows it around no matter where it is so it's pretty easy to know when you're near one you also have the new alpha commander which is a new brood commander on the terminal side this thing looks pretty cool i like the design of this and it's super tough it's heavily armored and there's new heavily armored terminal types which i think this alpha commander can call upon more regularly but they can just sort of pop up normally as well on the higher difficulties like level 10 on the automaton side we have the rocket tank and the re for scout strider no longer can you shoot out the pilot of a scout strider they are fully reinforced in their box if these things didn't look like atsts before they definitely do now and it also has two rockets on each side so this thing is a big threat much bigger than the normal scout strider so watch out for this the rocket tank is also pretty nuts but it has its weak box just like any other automaton a big enemy like a tank or anything like that we also have the new swamp planet which is a bit of a spookier variant 
variant of the swampy jungle biome that we've had since the Viper Commando Warbond update. It's pretty cool, it's a different vibe. It's basically the same as the other swamp biome, just more spooky. And we also have Acid Storms, which temporarily lowers armor for enemies and the player. So this will not only make you weaker, but it will also make the enemies weaker. So it gives and it takes. It's a pretty cool new environmental hazard we have to deal with. And those are the big major things that got added. Honestly, pretty good so far. There's gonna be more. This is not just a one update thing. A lot of people are just seeing Escalation of Freedom as one big update. Whereas you should be treating it like a season. You have Sea of Thieves that has seasons, Fortnite, those kind of games where it's basically like a theme for the season. Escalation of Freedom, treat it like season two of the game. There will be more big updates. They said that there's more stuff that they weren't showing in the trailers and stuff. It will probably come at a later date. This is not just one big update. So don't be too disappointed if you were expecting more from this initial update. We're gonna be getting more. Like I said, treat it more like a season rather than just one big update. But the additions we have got so far are really cool. Now on to the thing that is a dividing Helldivers community again, which is balancing. Weapons like the Slugger, the Breaker Incendiary, the Grenade Pistol, Exploding Crossbow, Guard Dog, Walking Barrage, and the HE Barrage all got balancing, as well as the Flamethrower. Now, people aren't too happy about this. It's more nerfs for the most part. There's a few buffs here and there. And yeah, people aren't too happy about it, especially the flamethrower and the breaker incendiary. We've got a flame-based war bond coming up and it seems like they're sort of balancing it for those new weapons to come in maybe. I don't know. Again, I don't really use a lot of these weapons, so I don't I never notice these balancing issues that people seem to have because I just don't use the weapons that get balanced. But I know a lot of people aren't happy. I don't think it really drastically changes the game. They did release a little article talking about the reasoning for their balance patching why they balance these weapons what it means for the game they also dealt with the commando which actually kind of got a buff you might remember this is the quad launcher whilst it didn't get a change just yet there is a current bug that allows it to destroy automaton fabricated buildings from any angle apparently this was unintended however people like this so the devs are gonna think about it maybe find a way of still including it but making it a bit more balanced somehow i'm not sure how they're gonna do this but they're sort of waiting for more player feedback and sort of look at this more constructively before doing anything drastic to the commando but yeah honestly the balancing not a lot really got changed so i'm not really sure why people are losing their minds i understand the sentiment that this is a pve game why are we nerfing weapons when we you should be buffing other weapons to match the op weapons quote unquote we had a big balance patch recently which sort of fixed a lot of the issues that people have with the balancing and it seems like we've reverted some of that but no doubt arrowhead know that whatever they do when it comes to balancing there's always going to be some people that don't like it some people that do some people that are like me that don't really have an opinion on the balancing as much i don't know i'm just here to vibe and play the game man but let me know in the comments down below if you've got an issue with the balancing or if you don't have an issue with the balancing do you think that what arrowhead are doing in terms of weapon balance Balancing and stratagem balancing. Is it a good thing? Is it a bad thing? Let me know in the comments down below. But for me, I'm pretty neutral on the whole scenario, but I can understand people's sentiments on both sides. There's a few gameplay changes as well. The Operation Modifier Atmospheric Interference has been removed. Additionally, for the automatons, we added the modifier Poor Intel, which makes objectives on the map to get a search radius just like most Eliminate objectives already has. We also got Corrosive Acid Planets no longer have the Intense Heat Environment modifier. Gunship patrols are now less frequent and the amount of ships are reduced. The gunship engines are, are less durable now as well, so they should be easier to take down. I usually take these down with a anti-material rifle. Does the job pretty well against these things. We also got improved armory weapon preview controls, updated orders UI, which actually looks pretty nice. I like the new UI setup we've got going on. I think there's a bug going on at the moment with UI update with the major orders. They're not properly showing up on the galaxy map when you log in for the first time and you get your, your briefing message. For me, it wasn't showing up properly, which is unfortunate. But from what I can see, the new UI update is pretty good. I like sleek UI. We also got energy shields such as the shield generator pack and shield generator relay now blocks snowstorms as well as sandstorms which is a pretty cool addition and we have a new grief protection system which has been added that allows kicked players to continue in their own mission this allows players to complete the mission and get full rewards despite being
being kicked. How good is that? Because for some reason people were kicking people and going funny haha I am troll I'm going to kick you from the game which means you don't get to participate in the mission anymore and you don't get the rewards. I think people were doing this really cruelly right at the end of missions as well so you'd put in all the effort to get the mission done and then they'd kick you and you wouldn't get rewards. Pretty scummy, but they've added an anti-grief method here to prevent that. Kudos to Arrowhead for looking into this and actually making a system that will protect those players. Really dig seeing that. And there are a bunch of fixes, bug fixes, weapon fixes, social menus fixes, and a bunch of other things. But honestly, that's pretty much it for this update. I'm sure there's gonna be more coming down the pipeline for Escalation of Freedom. Like I said, treat it like a season, not one up update because we also have a galactic war update because in my first impressions video of the update i mentioned that we finally got the anti-tank mines because we failed the major order to kill 1.5 billion enemies we have a briefing here that says after having first chosen airburst rockets in the liberation of penta over chu then failing to dismantle sufficient automatons for expedient construction of them followed by heroically choosing to save the very sick children at super citizen Anne's hospital for very sick children instead of securing the factories designated for mine production the day has finally come where the md-17 anti-tank mines will be available to all hell divers due to demonstrating that their current arsenal is insufficient to combat the enemies of liberty. Congratulations on the failure, Helldivers. We look forward to seeing the mines be put to good use. Weird to be congratulated on failing, but there you go, we got rewarded for it. However, dire tidings from the Full Star Sector. A sudden terminal wave has overrun Seaf outer recon posts on planet Socorro 3. Scattered reports indicate the presence of new terminal variants. These reports are like leak exaggerations, products of less than elite training. However, the terminate incursion is undoubtable. Additionally, an unusual interstellar phenomenon has been detected in the vicinity of Socorro 3, an interstellar terminate spore cloud of unusual size and density. While terminates are known to send spores between planetary space, nothing of this magnitude has been previously seen. The cloud may in part explain the presence of the sudden terminate incursion. The situation is being closely monitored. Now, could this mean that something big is coming from the terminates? I think so. There was currently a theory going around that the new side objective to do with the lava baby things, that these babies are actually Hive Lord babies. Now, what does that mean? It means that, you know, those big terminated skeletons you've seen around on the terminated maps? They're basically giant terminated worms. Yeah, well, they might be coming pretty soon. This theory has been floating around for a while, but it's sort of got more solid evidence because of this sort of theory that these babies are indeed Hive Lord babies. So we're extracting them and probably something's gonna happen where we experiment on them, they break out, and then we're in big trouble because now there's a new enemy type on the field once again. Could be something completely different, I don't know, but Terminators are obviously up to something. After all, they are the ones that got the most new enemy types in this update. We also still don't know what's going on with Meridia. I'm hoping that the Escalation of Freedom means that we'll have a new faction introduced. I think the Illuminate will still come out of this black hole. I'm holding fast to that theory. I think that will come at a later date. I think we're going to start to see a new faction towards the end of the year. Sort of that holiday season where a lot of big things happen in the gaming industry. I think Helldivers will think, you know what? Time for something huge. And they'll add the new faction during the holiday season. So hopefully I'm right about that because I would love to see a new faction on the field. But that's pretty much everything for Helldivers 2 right now. Pretty big updates. Lots of things happening in the game. Let me know in the comments down below what you think of the escalation of freedom update do you enjoy it do you not enjoy it like the video if you enjoyed it subscribe for more Helldivers 2 content become a member today if you want to support me in another way you get early access to videos and live streams and thank you so much for watching this and i'll see you guys in the next one bye